return to fertilizer on Modern Marvels. Many experts predict that by the year 2030, the world's population will swell to 8 billion. To meet demand, food production will have to increase. And to make that happen, we'll need to get more nutrients to more crops than ever before. Dr. Mike Amaranthus is looking for help in lowly places. He's focusing on a key building block of all plant life, mycorrhizae, or fungus root. It's not a fertilizer. Instead, it's a web of microscopic tentacles that help plant roots absorb soil nutrients. And it's been doing that for 450 million years, when plants only existed underwater and the fungi sprouted on what was then barren land. It was the fortuitous marriage of a primitive fungus and aquatic plants that allowed plants to leave their marine environments and colonize the Earth's surface. And this particular fungi is called mycorrhizal fungi. So it's been fundamental to life on Earth as we know it. Once it made the evolutionary leap, the fungus spread across the globe. And everywhere it went, plants soon followed. Today, mycorrhizal fungi live in 95% of the Earth's undisturbed habitat. The habitat that fertilizes itself with recycled organic material provided by the fungus. The fungi work in a symbiotic relationship with the plant root. The fungi receive sugar from the root. In exchange, they absorb and send soil nutrients back for the plant. When those nutrients are depleted, the fungi simply reach further into the soil for more. And they increase the root system several hundred to several thousand times. So instead of having only 20% of your fertilizer utilized, you can have 90 or 100% of it utilized. At their facility in Grants Pass, Oregon, the crew at Mycorrhizal Applications grows the fungi for distribution in the commercial market. In these thousand pound bags surrounding us is where the process begins. And that process requires a living host. This hay-like substance are actually the roots of the crop that was used to grow the mycorrhizal seeds. We collect the seeds of the mycorrhiza and we use those seeds to produce the next generation of mycorrhizal plants. The seeds, or spores, are then germinated in a sugar solution. After they grow up, the fungi become twisted webs of hungry fibers. The microscopic fungi seeds are then mixed with a clay material and made into granules. The fungi are ready to help some depleted soil return to life. The reason we use mycorrhizal fungus is because the plant roots and the plants, when they go into the local soils around here, the soils have been usually a construction site. Uh, they've been devastated. There's no microorganisms. There's no beneficial bacteria in the soils. So we put it in as kind of an insurance policy. That's how we started using it. Mycorrhizal Applications ships half a million pounds of the fungi to customers around the globe. Although its use is in its early stages, the effect of the mycorrhizal fungus on crop production looks promising. Independent research shows up to a 20% increase in corn, wheat, vegetable, and fruit yields when farmers combine the fungus with fertilizers. And as it did 460 million years ago, it has the potential to help turn vast areas of barren desert into productive croplands. million years ago, no plants covered the Earth's surface. Plants only existed in lakes and seas and lacked the elaborate root structures that they need to conquer the harsh conditions on the land. But around 460 million years ago in this ancient landscape, a marriage of convenience occurred between primitive plants 
and a specialized fungus that changed the world. The fungal thread secured its energy source from the plant, and in return, the fungal filament explored the harsh Earth's surface. The plant acquired the needed nutrients and water to sustain life from the fungus, and that resulting evolutionary leap allowed plants to inhabit the land surface and has shaped life as we know it today. We call this symbiotic relationship between plant and fungus mycorrhizae. The relationship is ancient, but it's only in the last few decades that scientists have come to appreciate the key role that mycorrhizal fungi play in the health and nutrition of plants. My name is Mike Amaranthus, and I am a microbiologist. I began studying why trees and nurseries were stunted after fumigation. The soil fumigate killed the disease organisms, but they also killed the beneficial soil organisms like the mycorrhizal fungi. These trees were stunted because they lacked nutrients, but the soil contained an abundance of nutrients. What was the problem? Without the mycorrhizal fungi, the plant could not access the reservoir of nutrients that were tightly bound in the soil. Any mycorrhizal fungi to the soil rapidly allowed the plants to grow normally. Mycorrhizal fungi attach to the roots of the plant. Fine filaments then radiate out into the surrounding soil. They increase the absorbing area available to the roots several hundred to several thousand times. Several miles of these ultrafine filaments can be present in less than a thimble full of soil. Mycorrhizal fungi supply the water and the nutrients needed by the plant for establishment and survival, and in return, receive from the plant roots, sugars, and other compounds that are needed by the fungus. Mycorrhizal fungi excrete powerful enzymes into the soil that unlock tightly bound mineral nutrients such as phosphorus, calcium, and iron. Once they're unlocked, the same fungi transport those important mineral nutrients back to the plant where they can be utilized. Mycorrhizae provide many other benefits to plants. The fungal filaments take up and store water, they decrease drought stress during dry periods, and since they are much smaller than roots, they can easily penetrate into the smaller spaces between soil particles. These fungal filaments also bind soil particles into larger aggregates with organic glues. The resulting soil structure allows air and water movement into the soil and encourages root growth and root distribution. Mycorrhizal fungi attack disease organisms that enter the root zone in several ways. Some produce antibiotics that can immobilize or kill disease organisms. Others actually set traps for root feeding nematodes and strangle them. To achieve the benefits of the mycorrhizal relationship, they have to be present on your site. Research indicates it takes years, even decades for mycorrhizae to repopulate a construction site such as this. As a consequence, the plants do not have the natural tools that they need to handle environmental extremes, moisture stress, and disease. We now know that mycorrhizal populations have been lost, where we've seen severe fire, compaction, erosion, grading, topsoil removal, tillage, paving, and pollution, and the use of certain chemicals. These conditions are definitely not the conditions that plants faced in their natural environment. How do you reestablish mycorrhizal fungi once they've been lost from your site? Well, recent advancements in our understanding of mycorrhizal fungi and their requirements has led to the production of high quality, economical mycorrhizal inoculum at affordable prices. Mycorrhizal inoculum is available as powder, granular, gel, and liquid forms. It's easy to get mycorrhizae re-established on a site. You simply want to get the mycorrhizal inoculum 
in close proximity to the root system. And you can do that by simply sprinkling the, the inoculum in and around the root ball. What we're doing is expanding the root system of the plant several hundred to several thousand times using naturally occurring beneficial soil organisms. So the plant can get more nourishment in terms of water and nutrients out of the soil. We grow the seeds of these fungi and we grow billions and billions of these seeds and we put them in various mixes and the plant roots trigger the little seeds to germinate and they form these strings in the soil which are really an extension of the root system. And that's what feeds the plant, are these little tiny threads in the soil. About 90% of the world's plants form this relationship in their native habitat. So we really haven't invented anything, we just learned how to grow the spores. And they're particularly important in environments that are very rigorous, like Arizona. It is where agriculture begins and ends. The soil beneath our feet holds the key to sustaining the world's food supply. Yet recent demands on this crucial resource have been crushing. Millions of acres of soil that sustain the world's food supply are under assault. For decades, farmers have leaned on large quantities of fossil fuels to produce crops. But these synthetic additives have pushed our soils, our environment, and our health to the limit. And with the world population well past six billion, a food production crisis may be closer than we realize. The restoration and health of our soil is one of the most important issues facing the agricultural industry today. The current state of agriculture right now is really in turmoil and our current state of soil is in, in really bad shape. We've lost our soil through wind erosion, water erosion, as well as uh, simply destroying the carbon in the soil through the chemical fertilizers as well as the pesticides that have been used in the past 50 years. One of the most important advances in soil restoration is also one of the Earth's oldest secrets. In the last 70 years, because fossil fuels were so inexpensive, we could produce chemical fertilizers very inexpensively. Uh, but before that system, we managed our soils biologically for the last 10,000 years. And that maintained their continued sustainability and mycorrhizal fungi historically were a big part of that, where they provided the energy to fuel plant growth naturally. The naturally occurring mycorrhizal fungi protect crops and keep them healthy while making soils more resistant to erosion. Mycorrhizal fungi are unsung heroes that naturally protect and enhance our critical soil system without using toxic chemicals. Research shows that beneficial fungi deposit atmospheric carbon dioxide, the most significant greenhouse gas, into soil carbon, which greatly improves soil productivity. This may play an extremely important role in mediating the effects of global warming. So why haven't more farmers used this fungus superhero? Up until very recently, it was cost. I became aware that mycorrhizal fungi was one of the key organisms naturally occurring in soils that could be used to access phosphate fertilizer that was in the soil but unavailable for crop production use. Dr. Mike Amaranthus has researched the exceptional qualities and the production of mycorrhizal fungi for decades. In these granules, which we call our mycorrhizal inoculum, are the seeds or the spores of the mycorrhizal fungi which will develop that nourishing relationship between the plant and the soil. We can reestablish mycorrhizae in soils in a matter of months. The key is to get the seeds of the mycorrhiza in contact with the living root because the root supplies little drops of sugar which fuels the growth of these tiny threads in the soil. And in exchange, the mycorrhizae bring the nutrients and the water back to the plant. His goal has been providing a more cost-effective way for farmers like Gerald Weeb to obtain and utilize mycorrhizal fungi. Using mycorrhizal inoculum, we can consistently get increases in yield of 5 to 20 percent. But that's just part of the story. The other part of the story is that farmers can decrease their input costs to grow their crops. And if you consider the cost per acre of nitrogen at 50 to 60 dollars an acre, and phosphorus at $50, $60 per acre, 
a 30% savings by using the mycorrhizae pays for itself several times over. The typical conventional farming operation produces a lot of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere, which contributes to global warming. Mycorrhizal fungi are unique in that they can actually take atmospheric carbon and fix it and allocate it beneath the soil surface. So you remove greenhouse gases and you invest it in the soil where it improves soil productivity. Using the product has, has clearly helped our bottom line uh, in that we're producing the crops at a lower cost and we're able to keep a higher value of that production in, uh, in our own pockets as farmers. We need to inoculate our crops with mycorrhizal fungi and really until mycorrhizal applications came along the basic information of training farmers, training consultants like myself about mycorrhizal application to seed just wasn't out there. The recognition of this new approach for growing plants sustainably has been fantastic. We've received numerous awards in terms of scientific achievements like the USDA's highest honors program. We've been featured on national broadcasts such as Modern Marvels and the Nature Program. We've had 13 university studies in the last couple of years which document the benefits. Probably the single uh, most misunderstood thing about mycorrhizae is how profoundly important they actually are. Um, in the natural system, mycorrhizal fungi are actually the primary means by which 95% of all plants on the planet are supposed to get nutrients and water from the soil. And, you know, and the obvious question that people say, well, then what about the roots? Uh, believe it or not, the actual uh, biological function of the root of most plants, besides physically anchoring the plant, is not to absorb nutrients and water from the soil. That's the function of mycorrhizal fungi. The, the uh, evolutionary uh, history of a, of a root and the origin of a root is it is a specialized tissue of the plant that harbors it's the, the mycorrhizae. It's the attachment site um, and the transfer site for the mycorrhizae that is the primary method to get nutrients and water from the soil. Um, the fact that roots can absorb water and nutrients without mycorrhizae is a backup system that nature put in place in case they should lose their mycorrhizae but it's really just kind of a temporary get-by system, very inefficient compared to the fungi. You know, I get asked a lot, well, if mycorrhizae are all over the world and all plants are supposed to have them, why aren't they in ag fields as well as in natural systems? The single biggest reason is fallow. It's a necessity of, of our cropping process, but typically we go fallow between crops for several months and mycorrhizae have to have a living root to survive. Um, this is one thing nature never anticipated was that there would be long periods of you know many acres that were fallow and the way they reproduce is from one another, from adjacent plants. So when we render whether it's no-till or conventional or what you know full-on till farming when you go fallow between crops there are no living roots and the mycorrhizae die and they don't they, they don't blow in the wind they don't fall with the rain um, it takes many many years decades or more for them to naturally replace themselves and so that's how they're lost um, there are other contributing factors mycorrhizae are a fungus so the use of fungicides not all but some fungicides take them out in uh, probably not so much in uh, commodity crop production but in some croppings it's very common to fumigate your, the ground between crops. Obviously that not only kills the fungi but kills everything else. Um, compaction uh, slows them down. Anything that's going to slow down the bacteria because there are um, complicated manifest symbiotic relationships between the beneficial soil microbes and the mycorrhizae that stimulate them. So compaction, um, use of 
high NPK fertilizers don't directly hurt the mycorrhizae, but they slow down the microbe, the other microbes that would stimulate the mycorrhizae. So those are some of the other uh, situations.